On the 23rd day of the month of Savan, they wrote this decree. Now, let me read you out of the very end of, of Esther chapter 8. Let me read you what happened. Oh, hang on just a second. In Jesus' name, I cast the demon out of my iPad that is manifesting up here. So it says at the very end, do you have that scripture? Show me this up in the, the sound booth, the very end of chapter uh, 8. It's like verse 12-ish. Give me a good old Bible that's not electronic. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Chapter 8, verse 17. Okay. And in every province and city, wherever the king's command and decree came, the Jews, that's us, were the people of God, right? Had joy and gladness, a feast and a holiday. You know what the holiday is called? It's called Purim. And the Jewish people call it the holiday of reversals. Now, let me just say this. In Christ, every single day is the holiday of reversals. We don't have to wait for some day on the calendar. Every single day is a holiday of reversals. Now, look at what it says next. Then many people of the land became Jews. And I'm going to read this to you out of the Amplified. Many people of the land became Jews for the fear of the Jews and their God had fallen on them. You know what that is? That is revival. In this season of turnarounds, the very people that were lined up to take them out, suddenly the fear of God fell on them. And all of a sudden, these people that were against the Jews suddenly said, we want to become Jews. How many people that have stood against Christians and have mocked us are turning around? Let me read you Esther chapter 9, verse 3 out of the Amplified. It said, even all the officials in the provinces... The chief rulers, the governors, and those who attended the king's business, we're talking about government officials, began to support the Jews in defeating their enemies because the fear of Mordecai and his God's, and his God's power had fallen on them. So suddenly there was a shift that government leaders that had been arrayed against, that had been set against the people of God, suddenly the fear of God started falling on them and those government leaders started turning around and saying, you know what, we're going to become Jews too. Where's your faith? Who's the hardest cases? That y'all don't need to shout out names, okay? But come on, how many believe God could start turning hearts? The fear of God could start falling. Listen, you know how I believe this? I was raised by agnostic parents. My dad, I was daddy's girl. But let me tell you, when I, when I fell in love with Jesus, my daddy felt betrayed. And he mocked me. And he argued with me. And he fought with me. He said, I just can't believe you believe that book of fairy tales. You're a smart girl. How can you just throw your mind away? Then when I heard the voice of God at 16 and I decided to go into ministry, go to Bible college, my dad said, it's one thing to throw your mind away. Now you're going to throw your whole life away. And I studied apologetics. My dad's a scientist. So I studied so that I would be able to talk with him. Be able to give him a good, good reason for my faith. And he'd still keep arguing with me until one day the fear of God fell on him. And my daddy became a Christian. Come on. And that was so cool when my dad became a believer. But let me tell you what happened. All those years where I had given him reason after reason after reason for my faith. The next Thanksgiving... His brother-in-law came down and had Thanksgiving with us. His brother-in-law was an atheist, not just an agnostic, but an atheist. And his brother-in-law said to me, by the way, they're all from New Jersey. <laughs> P.S. <laughs> so I know the spirit y'all deal with up here, okay? My, my uncle said to me, he said, Janie, he called me Janie. He said, Janie, I just don't understand you. He said, you represent everything I hate, but for some reason I still like you. He said, please tell me why you believe all this nonsense about Jesus and religion. And why do you just throw your mind away with all this kind of stuff? And I went, well, Uncle Richard. And I went to answer him and my dad goes, no, wait, Jane, I've got this one. <laughs> 
And for the next three hours, my dad spit back at him everything I'd said to him for 15 years. Come on. And my Uncle Richard was like, you know what, Frank? If I didn't know better, I'd think you were a Christian. And my daddy said, yes, I am. When you have an experience with a living God, it absolutely changes everything. Come on. <laughs> I'm so totally rabbit trailing. Okay. How many are expectant for revival? Let me just say this. The, th the very things that the enemy has fought against you are getting ready to boomerang back. How many know my dad witnessing to my uncle was a boomerang? Yeah. Yeah. We're, we're having examples of revival happening all over this country. Where the enemy thought he'd come in and break the church apart. Shut the church down. Shut the church up. You know that was the enemy's plan. Okay? That was his first strategy. If I can break the church apart, I can do anything to this nation. But guess what? It boomeranged back on his head because churches went online, churches took to the ground, and I want you to know the church is coming back stronger than ever before. There is a remnant that is rising. Amen? But I know we know Joshua Giles. Have y'all had Joshua here? Okay, so y'all know about the revival in Minneapolis? You know that on that tragic day that George Floyd lost his life, it was a horrible thing in the nation. Riots, protesters, all this stuff. God had moved this little boy from North Carolina up to the cold, cold north of Minnesota. How many of you'd have to know that was God, right? And he moved just a few blocks from where George Floyd tragically lost his life. So he went down there, saw the protesters, saw the crowds, saw people being bussed in. So you know what he started doing like a good preacher? He started to preach. Right on the spot that George Floyd lost his life, he started preaching. And people started giving their hearts to Jesus. He started calling out Muslims, giving them words of knowledge, prophesying over them, to opening the, the, the door of their closed hearts. And so many preachers started coming in on the very spot that George Floyd died. They thought they'd just use it to burn down cities. I'm telling you, God used it as a starting point for revival. And the enemy's plans boomeranged back on his head. He said that so many people were getting saved, they erected a portable baptismal right on the spot that George Floyd died. So instead of it being just a point of death and tragedy, it became a point of people getting birthed into the kingdom. Come on. Somebody celebrate. Somebody say boomerang. Boomerang. 